I just built one of the best micro connects coasters that you'll ever see. What I decided was to build El Toro from Six Flags Great Adventure, the infamous wooden coaster that really has no issues with it at all. At least I hope not. Yeah, took you long enough. Excuse me, but I was also trying to figure out what you are, trying to figure out how to get new trains and all the other details to make another roller coaster that is to the standards of probably what we will want now. Oh really? Well why don't you walk us through how you got to build this new version of El Toro, Mr. Coaster Crafter? Well I'm glad you asked. So recently I was watching my old videos and noticed that my coasters back then were pretty lackluster. Oh yeah, they sucked pretty bad. You don't gotta rub it in. Anyway, with the amount of talk and showcases of new innovative ways to make Kinex coasters and the trains especially, I decided I can do better and probably make one of the best coasters I've ever made. Oh yeah. And I love the fact that you put some very intuitive and detailed features on this ride. Good job not sucking on this one. Why, thank you? Well, before we get down to even more about how this coaster works, I say we do what we do best and showcase this masterpiece, shall we? Let's do it. All clear for dispatch. But why don't you explain to everyone what we wanted to accomplish with this ride? Well, the main things we wanted to make sure we accomplished with this ride were its autonomy, accuracy, and aesthetics. So we wasted no time and started to gather up all the information needed to make El Toro in the best way possible. Yep, and this one did take a little longer than usual. So to summarize all this up, this coaster also had to be constructed a lot bigger because of the new trains I received. Big shout out to YouTube channel Clover Coasters for providing these trains for this project. They look absolutely amazing and run flawlessly on the track. Be sure to stay tuned to see more trains like this to come to our channels and eventually to you all. Once this coaster was fully constructed accurately, I then programmed a simple operating system for this coaster to run all on its own after the push of a couple buttons. It starts off with a sensor reading a train that's rolling by into the station, which then opens the station gates, closes them, and dispatches the train. There's then another sensor at the bottom of the turnaround that tells the lift hill to only run when there's a train in motion. Lastly, once it's completed the full cycle, it then comes to the drive system that's plugged into the wall so it never runs out of power. The brake run runs all the way back to the station and then it starts all over again. Overall, this coaster was a bit more of a challenge because of the new trains, as well as the weight that they carry, which then exerted a lot more force on the track. To stabilize these parts that were shaking quite a bit due to the lateral forces, I used weights to basically lock down the structures so that the train can make it all the way around the circuit. But man, all that work on this experimental coaster paid off. Indeed it did! I say we build another big one like this soon and make things more intricate and complex than this one! Oh boy. Well, they gotta like and subscribe in order to see what comes next. What's next on the drawing board then, Obot? Oh